let's talk and i pray that the lord himself will inform us and he keep us with the necessary knowledge that we need in jesus name Amen. i want you to pray just pray that god open my heart Amen. to receive yes. from you help me lord open my heart to receive from you the word of God says, oh, my people heart. perish Jesus. for lack Jesus. of knowledge. Lord, Jesus. open my eyes of understanding. Grab me new knowledge. I'm open to receive from you. The Bible says the humble God will guide in judgment. Lord, help me. Guide me. Teach me. Knowledge and understanding. Thank you, Father. As I receive in Jesus' Jesus name, Jesus. we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you. Breathe upon this session tonight. Mm -hmm. Open our eyes of understanding. Amen. And Lord, we submit to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. We pray the spirit of truth will guide us into our truth. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Our members that are now here that need to benefit from this, Lord, we pray you will bring them in. Amen. Nothing will hinder your people in Amen. the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So tonight, just talk about COVID-19. And I want to tell you, I want you to open up. The Lord will impact you in Jesus' name. Amen. This is the word of God that says, what do people get for all the toil and anxious striving with which they labor under the sun? Ecclesiastes 2.22. What do people get for all the toil and anxious striving with which they labor under the sun? Thank God for the series we've been taking. We've spoken about, about rest, the need for rest, uh, last week, we were talking about healing, divine healing. Uh, we looked at mental health. So you can see that people, there are a lot of toil in the world, a lot of anxious striving. And at the end of the day, the, the wisest man concluded, said, vanity upon vanity, all is vanity. So uh, the reason why I'm saying that is because of what has been happening in the past one year, COVID has brought a lot of changes and challenges to our current world. A lot of them. A lot of them. But things have changed. And I will just show you a few of them. Now, before we go into those changes, the first case that was reported in Canada occurred January 25, 2020. As at last night, which is 22nd of March, the statistics are uploaded after 7 p.m. So I have the current statistics as at last night. Now 138,719 cases in Canada, almost 1 million. And total recovery, 880,159. And death. 22,716. So when you look at the majority of cases, 67.5%, which is like two third, have been reported by Ontario and Quebec. Those are the two largest provinces in Canada. And death, 78.6%, which is more than three quarter, have been reported by Ontario and Quebec. So you see that our meal team, which is in Ontario, we need to really pay attention that uh, this uh, COVID is real in our environment. So COVID-19 is much more serious than the flu. In Canada, flu kills roughly 3,500 patients. And when you see the number of people that has been killed in one year, about 22,000, I try to divide that by 3,500. That's almost, that's in fact about six times. So 
So COVID kills six times more than flu. So you see why people are paying a lot of attention. In fact, I heard again today that it's like, there is no flu this year <laughs> because of COVID. So COVID-19 pandemic, the changes or the challenges in our day, lots of death like we've seen, and that has translated to economic hardships because of the public health regulation, lots of lockdown. You can imagine a lot of small businesses that have closed down in the past year, a lot of them, restaurants, just name them. And we have educational disruptions, schools, many schools are online now, but a lot of things are disrupted. You can't really, you don't really know the syllabus that they are following. <laughs> Some schools are teaching mathematics for a few weeks, everything they should learn over one year, they will just face mathematics, some literature, some geography, everything is just disrupted. And apart from that, those that you, I should have had nice graduation, they've planned for their graduation, they've wished, they've thought about it, talked about it, prepared for it. It's really serious. You can imagine the emotional impact. Last year, we were planning for about three graduation in our home, but uh, because of COVID, you know, they didn't take place. <laughs> and the emotional impact is, is unbelievable. So, so a lot of uncertainty, <laughs> because we don't really know how will this thing pan out, what will happen. In fact, people are saying now that maybe the third wave is coming and because of the strains that we are having, the new strains. So a lot of uncertainty. And you should know that as people of faith, we should not live in fear. In fact, the Bible tells us in 2 Timothy 1.7 that God has not given us the spirit of fear because fear is a spirit but of, a, of power, of love, and of a sound mind. So a lot of fear. People are living in fear. In fact, we have a new diagnosis, COVID phobia. People are, especially people who, are, who have this OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. You just need to see them. A lot of people are living in fear. What will happen to me? And I've seen a lot of elderly people that have not stepped outside of their houses in the past six to nine months. Mm. People are just saying that, it's unbelievable. So when you gallivant around and you think all is well, there are some people who are just complying, they're afraid of even stepping outside. Some, they don't, they've not even stepped into their garden. They are just inside, all doors closed, all, all windows closed. Because that's what COVID has done. So these are the psychological reactions in the general population related to COVID-19. So you can see what I've said is specific and uncontrolled fear, aversive anxiety, frustration and boredom. You can imagine just living indoor for six to nine months. Some have inadequate supplies, inadequate information, alexamic traits. Some have, some have developed psychiatric conditions or it has precipitated or worsened their psychiatric illness. And some have significant lifestyle changes, profound adaptations. Just look at it. We, you can imagine before March, uh, bef yeah, before mid-March 2020, at least every Sunday, every Tuesday, we're all looking forward to being in church to see one another. But look at the significant lifestyle changes. And we're always looking forward to hug, to embrace, to greet, to shake hands, you know. 
but things have changed in the past year. So that's why we are looking at it again, so that we can be well informed as a church. And so that you can also understand the position of RHH in not opening our church. Uh, because Easter is coming. And you know, I always talk about CEOs. Uh, CEOs are people who come to church on Christmas and Easter only. And it's been found out that people attend church on Christmas Sunday and on Easter Sunday. If I the highest in, in restoration house, in 17 years of our existence, we always record the highest attendance on Easter Sunday. And Easter is coming in less than two weeks. And we're not going to be having an in-person service. And I'm sure you'll be hearing a lot of negativity. A lot of people will be saying one thing or the other, or writing one thing or the other on social media, that the church cannot be closed and things like that. So we we'll just want to inform you so that you know the reason behind our decision. Then people are resilient. We've seen that also. Uh, people can adapt, human can adapt to a lot of conditions. And we've also seen some social support, which are, which are positives in this COVID-19. And we've seen a lot of innovations and also disabling loneliness. You know, you need to think of others. Some people are actually lonely in this time. There's a lot of social isolation. They call it cabin fever. It's like you being in, in, in a cruise, cruise line and you are not going out for days. In fact, one week is always a long or two weeks on the cruise. How much more? Six months, nine months and things like that. So you, you can just imagine what people are going through. We want you to think through this and to know what people are going through. So yeah, 2020 and beyond is unprecedented. Uh, online presence rising, change in social networks and interactions, increasing mental illness. I know we've seen race relations, we've seen a lot of protests, uh, the Soros OK and all those things, uh, NSAS protests, and, all of them, they are just all over. Maybe people are, in fact, a lot of things are pushing people to the wall and people are agitating for their right here and there. Uh, so, so what should we not worry about? Anything we cannot change. And that is very profound. Today is Bible study. So that's why we, we'll, at least we introduce some scriptures. Philippians 4, 6 to 7. Let's read together. It's on the screen. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So you can say, be anxious for nothing. So anything we cannot change should not be. In fact, Paul said, be anxious for nothing. We should rather take things to God in prayer. So this should be a time we should draw closer to God. So Restoration House is doing well. I applaud and I salute all of you that are joining the prayer line. This is what Paul wanted us to do, you know, in time like this. That's why we are praying on a daily basis as a church. You know, we shouldn't live in fear. We shouldn't live in worry we should rather talk to our god and i really i really appreciate our church i appreciate people that are committed to uh to to prayer it's really really refreshing uh, to see that commitment and those of us that have not been praying uh it, it's good to it's good to to join us to join us in this, uh, in this race. Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. So how do we diagnose COVID-19? How do we diagnose COVID-19? And many of us have done the, uh, the test. There are different ways, but 
the one that is common is what I brought up, the nasopharyngeal swab, uh, which you is a tiny swab you put through your nose. You put through your <laughs> nose and you turn it about 10 times. And so yeah, you send it to the lab. They try to do a PCR test to say where they culture the, the virus. And the reason for doing that to be able to know whether uh, it's positive or negative. But the PCR test is very reliable. There are other ways of doing it. In fact, you can use your saliva, you can use your stool, but they are not that reliable. Yeah. In fact, this one, the nasopharyngeal swab, is also as uh, high specificity, but moderate uh, sensitivity. So, so that's why a positive test is more reliable. So it doesn't mean if you tell you you have negative tests, it doesn't mean you don't have COVID-19. Uh, so, so we need to take note of that. So a positive test for COVID-19 has more weight than a negative test. And, and that's the point I want to bring out by showing this. And how do I do it? You can do it through a private lab. For example, people that are traveling. Uh, it's about $180 or so or less or around that if you are traveling and they are all over. I think they have about two or three places in Arlington, Oakville, all over, Mississauga, they are all over. But if you have some symptoms or you're in contact with people, somebody that is positive, maybe unknowingly or knowingly, yeah, the government will cover it for you. All, all what you need to do is just to call the public health. That's a PH, Public Health of Canada. And they have numbers. So, and if you want more information in our community, just go to hamilton.ca. Uh, the city of Hamilton, they, they, they will link you up with the public health so you can get uh, information. So treatment, there's no medication for COVID-19. All what we can do is supportive or comfort management. I want to bring up some point here that Tylenol is preferred over Advil or any group of drug called NSAID, non-steroid anti-inflammatory drug. Uh, Advil is one of them. Naproxen or what you call a leave. The reason is that they increase the cardiovascular risk in any viral illness. So we don't want to use Advil, ibuprofen or Motrin or a leave. Yeah, we would rather prefer Tylenol. So Tylenol is what you should use for your support. If you have pain, headache or anything, take your Tylenol. And Tylenol can be taken every four hours, so it's quite good. And antibiotics is only prescribed if you have bacterial infection. In my, if you watch it online, the healthy Christine, I showed us the picture of the chest, the x-ray of a chest, the typical chest of someone with bacterial infection in COVID. Then steroids are used when someone requires oxygen, when you are, when your oxygenation level, that's the way we check the oxygen level, especially if it's getting lower than 90%. That's when the steroid works. Then there are, then there are other treatments based on the part of the world you come from. And I'm saying this because if you are from Nigeria or South Africa, they use ivermectin. Uh, some, some still use hydroxychloroquine, which we don't, we don't believe in that in North America. But depending on the part of the world, and some use Dongo Yaro or some, <laughs> some, some put some concussion together. Some are even talking about the back of uh, pineapple. And I'm just putting out this there, based on the culture and the part of the world you come from. Uh, because COVID virus tend to stay in the mucous membrane in your, in your nostrils. So some people believe if you can put some of this concussion together, you inhale, you inhale the steam. You know, some put ginger, they put the back of uh, pineapple and some other things. I, I don't want to get into that. Yeah. So, so it, 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 people try all sorts of things because it's novel. Prevention is the key. Prevention is the key. 
Public health advice is very important. Uh, physical distancing, wearing of masks, washing our hands or sanitizing your hands, avoiding shaking hands, hugging, etc. And of course, immunization, which is what I want to really talk about uh, uh, tonight. Sorry about the audio. Uh, so I want to talk about vaccine tonight. And the reason is a strong vaccine uptake <coughs> across our population is important in beating the COVID-19 virus. And I want to let you know that vaccines work. Vaccines work. Look at some diseases that have actually been eradicated through vaccines. If you look at whooping cough, about 17,777 per year. Now we only have about 2,332, a decrease of 87%. Measles used to be about 53,584. I'm looking at Canada now. Maybe in a year today, we have 292, if up to that. Moms, 36,000, now it's 103. Rubella, 14,974, now maybe one. See, 99% eradicated through vaccine. Diphtheria, 8,142, now one. About 99% eradicated. Look at polio. And polio, is a, you know, it causes paralysis. I'm sure you've seen uh, people using crutches. Uh, about 2,545 there. Now we don't even have any. And if it's been eradicated, except in some part of sub-Saharan Africa, like Northern Nigeria, for example. So, so let's just be clear in our mind that vaccines work. They work. So importance of complete immunization as scheduled. And I want to really emphasize some uh, information on the administration as recommended provides optimal protection. And schedules should be followed as closely as possible and whenever possible. If they are not, it's better late than never. It's better late than never. So what, what do I mean? If you, you, you are taking two shots and they, they tell you the second one should be taken between 28 days and three months. If it's three and a half months, maybe you travel one way or the other. So it's better to get the second one and not to get it at all. So intervals longer than those recommended between doses do not lead to a reduction in final antibody concentration. Individuals can catch up. I'm just talking about immunization generally now. So just for you to, to know. So why immunize? If we remind us of what we are preventing when we talk about immunization, because we should not just talk about COVID vaccine alone. There are a lot of other diseases that we need to know and that we need to also get immunization. So this is a time to really check yourself, even as a Christian, to see what you have. Measles. Measles. You see possible symptoms. Pneumococcal infection. And that one is common. Pneumococcal causes pneumonia. And people have coughing, difficulty breathing, they have pneumonia, and I've treated a lot of patients with septicemia. They just go unconscious. We transfer them to ICU. Some have meningitis, some have brain damage, death, or meningococcal infection. You see, it's like meningitis, brain damage. Some die from it. And all these things can be immunized. Tetanus, everyone should take it every 10 years. Diphtheria every 10 years. In fact, they go with tetanus. We have DPT, we have TD. Pertussis, everyone wants an adult to than during each pregnancy. Influenza, everyone, annually, people 65 years of age and over. And if you're at risk, you should take influenza vaccine. Uh, annually, people are at risk of spreading, of spreading the disease, essential service provider. <laughs> The pneumococca vaccine, 65 years of age and over, or people 18 to 64, hepatitis B. 
In fact, I, I recommend A and B when you travel, especially many of us from Africa, when you go, we've got some of these, uh, like hepatitis A, for example, and typhoid, they are transferred, we call it trophical oral route. Uh, physics of infected individual if it gets to your mouth and that is so easy especially in many areas of africa even through hand shaking touching the doorknob you know through food through water flies all those things they can easily transfer some of these things from physics of infected individual there are many gokoka people with specific medical condition, people live in communal residences, including military personnel. They should, if, if you go to Africa, for example, Nigeria or Sub-Saharan Africa, it's better you protect yourself against meningitis. Measles, mumps, rubella, varicella, uh, and varicella is important because a lot of us, and some of these things can also be tested in your blood system to know whether you are immune, whether you've had chicken pus, what we call chicken pus before as a child. And the latest one is HPV and females and males over nine years of age. And I want you to pay attention. There is no age limit. It should be discussed depending on risk. You know, many females have what we call uh, cervical cancer because of HPV. This can easily be transmitted. So if you are over nine years of age, it has been introduced into the school system in Ontario. If you're over nine years of age, you need to see your doctor if you don't have HPV. Then FP sister, if you are 50 and older, including people who have had a previous episode of shingles, you need to get shingles shot, FP sister. And travel vaccines, if you are traveling, you need to consult a travel clinic. Anytime you are traveling to Africa, don't just assume, oh, I pay my tight, or I have God as my insurance. Some of these things, God has given us the knowledge and we need to really apply them. So in, adult, in Canada, adults can be protected from 14 potentially deadly infectious diseases adults and this is profound shingles have be whooping cough mumps tetanus and the like chicken pox rubella hpv diphtheria hepatitis we can easily be protected through vaccine you know i'm trying to show you the impact of vaccine in in our current world these are things that were killing people in thousands in fact, more than what we've seen with COVID. And some of these things started like COVID. And science, you know, rose to the occasion. And they introduced this vaccine. So the hesitancy we are seeing today, you know, people in those days, they also showed them. But over time, it cooled down. People now see the importance of some of these vaccines. So COVID-19 vaccines, we have four approved in Canada today. As we talk, AstraZeneca, which is a viral vector from DNA, Moderna, mRNA, Pfizer, mRNA, Johnson & Johnson, also a viral vector DNA. So these four have been introducing into, in, in Canada. What are the advantages of taking this vaccine? Uh, it's been found out through research, reduce mortality, reduces ICU admission, and decrease risk of severe disease and death. In fact, what this immunization of this vaccine, what they do is that they induce immune response. Uh, so when you have COVID-19, virus in your body, the, you have Im, Im, immunity to overwhelm them. It's just like, <laughs> it's just like some thieves, they wrote you that they are coming to your house on so-so-so night and that they said we are 10. 
and you now maybe you are able now to talk to the government and the government helped you with 1000 soldiers to guard your house and the 10 thieves they will show up at 12 midnight as they promised and now with 1000 soldiers well trained with all the artillery you no know, they'll be able to overwhelm them so it's like that that's what the vaccine does you know so we have that immunity so some of them i, I think this is from russia the gamelia if you just think about i didn't put uh, johnson and johnson but i just want to show you the oxford astrazeneca the reason why we have it in Nigeria is because of the storage. It can be stored in regular free temperature between 2 and 8 degrees centigrade. But if you look at the Moderna, minus 20 degrees, up to six months, you see our temperature would be a problem in, in some part of Africa. Pfizer, minus 70. And if you also look at the cost, you see the AstraZeneca one. That we have in Nigeria now, you can see is the cheapest and is the one that can easily be stored. So, common side effect, and it's good to talk about this thing so that we we'll give you all the information. Uh, pain at injection site, I've taken it, I took the Pfizer one. Uh, tiredness, which is true. You can have muscle or joint pain, loss of appetite, headache, fever, chills. This is true, headache, dizziness or sleepiness. So there are a lot of, so you can have side effects. We should not be vaccinated. We should not take this. I'll finish on time to, I know, to give room for questions. Severe allergic reaction, uh, people who have anaphylaxis, reaction. There are some people, they carry what we call a pipen around. They, they have anaphylactic reaction. In fact, some of them faint and die. But people who are acutely ill, someone who, is, or who have symptoms or confirmed suspected COVID-19. So you don't want to give it when somebody is sick of COVID-19. So we want to defy it, we want to wait until when the person is has overcome it. Or if you receive another vaccine within 14 days, they don't want you to take it. And the reason is simple because it's novel. The, so that we know which one is creating the side effect or the reaction. That's the main thing. And children under 16 years. So all these vaccines, have, I think the research, the researches were done on children on people over 16 years. But Pfizer has just recently updated their information that his vaccine can be given to children 12 to 15 years who are at very high risk of severe outcome of COVID-19 or at increased risk of exposure. So there's something we call up labor use whereby uh, some of this, some medication are used in a, when you look at the outcome you know, of the illness. So which, vac which vaccine should I take? That's a question we we'll ask ourselves, especially with the media, because the media is full of negative news. And what you read on internet is also not true. A lot of them, a lot of the informations are distorted. And that's a problem of the, of this information technology world. Mm -hmm. So somebody's public health agency of Canada said the best vaccine for a Canadian is the one they can get. So just note that Health Canada has really, you know, they've subjected this vaccine to a lot of regulatory procedures before approving them. So if they are giving you AstraZeneca, just take it. You won't have pulmonary embolism in Jesus name. Yeah. And one immunologist said, Jennifer Gomama said, in the name of her immunity, I will take what is given as it contributes to the world on COVID. All the vaccines prevent severe COVID requiring hospitalization. If you are over, offered a vaccine, you just take it. <laughs> don't, 
don't listen to what people are saying about Johnson and Johnson that is from embryo, it's from tissue of newborn. That is not true. So I've put some of the common questions that may come up so that because of time in order to, which uh, through my own research and my experience. In fact, it's interesting that my, the pharmacist where I work, they asked me this today about the first one, mix and match. Oh, doc, can we mix and match? What mix and match means is can you, because the only one that is just one dose is the Johnson one. AstraZeneca is two doses, Pfizer is two doses, Moderna. Can you take one Pfizer and take the second one, Moderna? No, we should avoid that. So you need to know which one you are giving if you are taking the two dose regimen. So if it's Pfizer, you stick with Pfizer. If it's Moderna, you stick with Moderna. So avoid mix and match. There's no convincing evidence that AstraZeneca vaccines cause blood clot. No convincing evidence. You see, it, it, it's just a, it may just be a coincidence. Over 22 million have been administered in UK alone. You know, it's from Oxford in UK. And only 30 people had <laughs> just pulmonary embolism. And they've tried to look at them. You know, we see this number, even in people who don't, who don't even have a vaccine. So it just be a coincidence. So you can see that it's so minimal. If you look at it, if you look at the maths or look at the figure, the number. Then the second dose of the vaccine can be extended up to four months after the first. It's been found out that it's even better to delay it because initially they said 28 days. But the second dose can be, can be extended up to four months. In fact, I was scheduled to, uh, to get my second dose on Thursday. And yesterday they phoned me that because of the new uh, public health guideline that they have to postpone it, ah, which is okay. So they, because it can be extended up to four months. Then vaccine hesitancy has been named by WHO as one of the 10 threats to global health. One of the 10 threats to global health. If you don't take vaccine, and the reason people say, you know, they don't want to take it or they are hesitant is because COVID-19 vaccines are brand new. It's true. But most of this technology, you know, the technology has been there for many, many years, for more than 15 years. They've been researching this technology in, you know, in the management of cancer. In fact, if you look at the technology, the viral vector technology that they use for uh, the uh, AstraZeneca and the Johnson, the, the, that technology has been used in, in, in all this Ebola vaccine. Then I love this. The reason why people are also hesitant, you know, some people have what we call vaccine distrust and you don't you don't get into argument with people because people have justification they can justify it you know why they just don't trust science and the truth of the matter is that uh, racism and, and and some people have made a lot of mistakes in the past because of the injustice of the past in 1930 there was a time they were carrying out the syphilis studies and they, they just allow black people or black folk to just die like that. And that's why a lot of people today are hesitant. And this thing happened, you know, uh, in in US. They call them the Tuskegee experiment. It was conducted by CDC. They enrolled just black men with untreated syphilis in the study. You know, you can imagine without, and many of them were enrolled without informed consent. And, but thank God that we are living in a modern world. You know, the world has evolved such a thing. Ethics is very, very important in any research today. Uh, it, it would be very, very hard. I'm not saying it's not possible to get away with such 
in 21st century. But that took place in 1930 with the syphilis studies with the Blacks. So a lot of Black folk died. And this thing has been passed on from one generation to the other. And that's why a lot of Black folks and people, so in case you don't know the reason why some people just don't want to hear anything about the vaccine, is because of what has happened in the past. And in 1940, 1950, and this happened in Toronto, there was a nutritional experiment on indigenous children and the, and the you know, Indians, you know, uh, a lot of them were just allowed to die because of the experiment they were doing on them. They stabbed them and many of them were allowed to die. You know, uh, it was, this thing was conducted in residential schools or malnourished indigenous children. Instead of feeding them, and this was done at the, the, at the direction of the Department of Indian Affairs under the leadership of two physicians, you know, and instead of, so these people, these children were given less than half of the daily nutritional re requirement in order to study malnutrition. So they were more, you know, they were more concerned about the outcome of the study and children were dying, were dying, instead of stopping it, they, a lot of people. And that's why if you go to the indigenous community today, they find it difficult to, you know, to trust science or the government. So this, these are some of the reasons why people are hesitant or who don't want to. Uh, so I need to bring it up um, before I conclude. RHH uh, during COVID-19. So this is what we advise giving up, shaking hands and the life be replaced with bumping elbows or tapping feet with each other. And we've eliminated a lot of chairs in our sanctuary to create spaces. And this is what we've put in place. And online platforms are no longer uh, an option. So most of our services are online now. And we're encouraging our members to join. And online giving, we encourage that as well. We have RHH app, a website, text to give, you know, you can do e-transfer. And all these things are saved. We've actually, we are using professionals to make sure uh, all your information, anything you give are saved. Then we are really putting a lot of emphasis on us fellowship. So if you don't belong to any house fellowship, we want you to belong to one. We have one very close to you. Uh, so if you are online tonight or you know anybody, please let's help our members. We want to reach you. I want you to be a part of of the church. We don't want anybody to suffer uh, in silence because we, we still want to connect with you. We don't want social isolation. And that's why we're encouraging our fellowship. And we have our fellowship leaders. We have about, I think we have about 14 to 15 as fellowship currently. And we are ready to start new ones. Then we have daily teleconference prayer. Uh, so that we all have a meeting point, even during this time, this unprecedented time. So, and thank God for the people that are committed to the prayer. It's quite nice. And the truth of the matter is that we are discovering a lot of gifting, a lot of talent. You know, people love prayer. In fact, people are clamoring for 24-hour prayer again, which we are going to introduce uh, very soon as well. So, that's what we have put in place. In conclusion, RHH online services, you know, for going in-person services doesn't mean for going worship. We don't want you to cut off. We want you to be. Let's still come together. You know, you just, just think about those in the persecuted church who have worshipped outside of a building for years. We have RCCG in Kenya, and they meet underground. I've met the pastor. We, in, even, China. in China, yeah. So even my friend, I was spoken about it. How just imagine, you know, now uh, church churches instead of being in a room, we are on Zoom. For example, tonight. So we just need to make the best use of what we have. 
So we have, this is the way we run our services. We have pre-recorded services. It allows the team to prepare ahead of time and foresee the unexpected so that we can give you excellent you know, production. And a lot of our people are working behind the scene. And of course, we need more hands. And if you are interested, you can let us know. And we also have live online services. You can imagine what God has allowed us to you know, to start uh, done in, in the past one year. Brave Fort Conference, for example, we run live services. We have WAMP, WAMP second Saturday, 8 a.m. for men when a man prays. The women, they are praying the last day of every month from 11 p.m. They cross the midnight. And also, we want you to share your testimony. And that's an area I'm not really happy as your pastor, as your senior pastor. A lot of us are not sharing our testimony. You know, share your testimony. That's the way you can encourage someone. And you can, if you want to share your testimony in one of the services, we'll give you the platform to talk. If you want to send it by email, we'll read it out. So we want to encourage you to share your testimony so that we can encourage one another, especially in this time. So that, because some people are still struggling with their faith and your testimony will encourage them. You know, somebody called me yesterday and told me, oh, pastor, I started another job in January. I said, so you are one of the people, you know, God has, God is answering our prayer, but we don't know. You're just telling me now, you've not even shared it in church. You know, think we have a lot of things going on like that. We want you to share your testimony, please. And we are giving glory to God, not to man. We want to encourage ourselves so that you can encourage somebody. So my, this is my last slide. Get involved. We need your innovative mind in this new normal. A lot of things are happening. Things are taking, are happening fast. So we want you to get involved. We need your innovative mind in this new normal. Phone num the phone number of the church remains 905-527-1622. And the email address is office at restorationhouse.ca. Or you can visit us on, online. I want you to get involved. We need your innovative mind in this new normal. So we'll take some questions or comments as we wrap it up tonight. Thank you for listening. Thank you.